Howdy ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today along with my son. Nathaniel. That's right, guys. Today we're going to be working on a John Deere L120, an older riding lawnmower that has a bad cylinder head on it. It's got some valves seized up in the head. We got a brand new head. We're going to put it on here today and get this mower running, we hope, anyway. So join us as we journey through this together. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, hey, this thing here about, I guess it's sometime last season, uh, this thing just stopped running. I don't even remember exactly what happened. It seemed like it just started running bad, then all of a sudden it stopped running. What it ended up determining, this is the valve cover off of the, I believe they call it the right side cylinder head. What's the right side on the engine? Here's a bent push rod, okay? And this is just some of the hardware that held the valve cover in place. And let's get down here and look right quick. It looks like, uh, see how this rocker arm's real loose? Missing the push rod there. The other side has a push rod in place. We're gonna take these rockers off of here. And I, from my, what, what I propose happened, the only way that a, put the camera back up here on dad a minute. The only way that I think a push rod can actually bend on something like this would be the fact that if the valve actually got seized up in the head so far that you know the cam forces the uh, rocker to move, the rocker can't move because the valve is seized in the head. The weakest link is the push rod, so it bends it, okay? So that's what I think we're gonna find when we get the cylinder head off of here. Now we have new parts here. Uh, bring the camera over here and thing. Show the people what we got. We got this from a local John Deere dealership. Looks like we got a pair of rocker arms inside here. Um, we have some gaskets inside here as well. And I've had these parts for a while. I have just put off uh, replacing this. You see, we got head gaskets and some other gaskets as well. We'll look at those a little closer here in a little bit. And here is the brand new right side cylinder head. It comes loaded with valves and valve springs, uh, retainers, and locks and everything. It's pretty much ready to go, okay? So we're going to tear this thing down today. I am not a lawnmower technician. So we'll be learning together today as we start pulling things apart. And so just stay tuned. We'll get this done together. Okay guys, down here on this right side of the engine here, I think I'm gonna start with pulling this um, fuel line. And I know that this is like a little uh, fuel pump. I think it's like a little pressure pump or something. Kind of operates on vacuum or something. I can't remember. It's been like I researched that one time. I had to replace these fuel lines one time. I don't know if any fuel will run out of this thing or not. Probably, I didn't think so. It's been so long since we've done anything. I'm going to lay this, pull it out of this clip right here. Kind of let this lay down right there. And I wish I had my little cordless here today. I'm going to start pulling, pulling loose some of these 10 millimeters. I'm just going to do it by hand so we don't have to listen to the air, air compressor run. And looks like there's a bolt right here, another 10 millimeter, holding this bracket in place. Okay, we're just kind of learning together here, guys. Daniel's our cameraman today. How you doing today, Daniel? You excited to be out here today? You can talk, you know. <laughs> All right, folks, I'm just gonna kind of lay these parts, I guess, right here on the ground as we th take things apart. There's our spark plug wire. I'm gonna pull these two uh, screws here loose. This will take our air filter out right here. I'm gonna lay it down here. Uh, I might just go ahead and pull the air filter out. Looks like we need to clean that anyway, or possibly get another one. So we're gonna work on that as well. Uh, we may end up having to take this whole cover off of here. We've had this off one time before, I believe as well. So we'll take a look at this head one time, the way it's made. I think we probably will have to pull all this off. 
because this actually goes something like that right there in that fashion so yeah this cover we definitely i think have to access this because we gotta get this metal shield off of here it covers up everything so yeah we're gonna start pulling some more stuff off here all right so let's start doing this and just see what happens guys i'm getting this main cover off of here and i've had this off one time before and if i remember correctly i had to pull these eight millimeter bolts out as well for some reason or another so i'm going to go ahead and pull them out may not need to but i think i do so we're going to go ahead and get these out of the way it's easy enough to do and what that does is we're going to take this little cover off we're going to lay it aside as well over here and we took two 10 millimeters out here i think we got a couple on this side too don't we nathaniel we got one back here in the corner i'm gonna go ahead and take this one out with a with a gear wrench this one right here with a gear wrench and i'm gonna pull these two out with my ratchet okay i won't bother showing you me, me removing all these i'm just letting you know what i'm getting ready to do we're gonna pull two here with a wrench two here with the socket so you can go ahead and cut the film here for just a minute baby. Okay. okay guys with all those bolts removed look at there look at there that comes off nice and easily we're going to clean this up with some soap and water here in a little bit get that nice and clean and now we're looking down here at this old cylinder head looks like we've got a coil right here bring your camera over here daniel kind of look at the things first of all we're going to take the shielding off out of the way we're going to figure out what holds it in place we'll get all the shielding out of the way where we can expose the head bolts we may or may not have to remove this coil so i will let you know first of all i'm going to find where we have to remove the shielding bolts so stay tuned and i'll let you know where that is he's going to get the flashlight so he'll be right back guys before i take that shield off i'm gonna go ahead and pull these rocker arms off of here and uh i'm gonna get these out of the way so i want to pull that other push rod out and see if it's bent i can't remember if i've even had these off before or not okay so here's one rocker arm We'll lay them aside. So this here would be a trying to figure out if this is an intake valve or is also out. I'd have to see where the intake runner is. Looks like the intake is the upper one. So I'm thinking that's intake. Thinking this is exhaust here. Not 100 percent sure, but I think this is the exhaust valve here that the um, valve is seized up in the head. I'll know more here in a little bit. I'm gonna keep them separated. I put the exhaust, I laid the exhaust one over here. I'm gonna lay the intake right over here on the other side of the wheel. Out of my way. Okay. All right, so here we go. And here is the, what I think is the intake. That push rod is actually bent too. Look at there, guys. Sucker's bent as well. Okay. The only thing I don't have for this job today is new push rods. And I, I forgot to order them. I was thinking about straightening these just to get it running and then go back in there and um, replace the other ones when they get here. We may end up waiting. We'll see as the day progresses. So I'm going to lay these over here on the side. I know that come off of the upper one. And let me grab my flashlight. See if I can determine where this shielding bolt's on here. Looks like this is pretty loose right here. I'll move this coil wire out of here. I'm just gonna lay it over here. Something is holding it down low. Yeah, we got something right down here holding it. So much dirt and mess on here, I can't hardly tell. 
Morning. I see it right there. Okay, it's a eight millimeter headed bolt, kind of hard to get to. It goes straight up underneath here, okay? Probably won't be able to film. I got my middle finger on it right there. It's going straight up. Looks like it's got an eight millimeter head on it. So let me get the tools I need for that and remove it. Okay, I got the uh, short eight millimeter quarter inch drive socket on a quarter inch drive ratchet here. This seems to work pretty good. So we are backing that out. Let's see if I can get it the rest away with my fingers. Uh, might need the socket wrench a little bit more. As you see, that's definitely the only thing holding that shield on there. All right, if I can get a hold of my fingers now. Oh yeah, we got it here. Okay, so this shield here comes right off. As you can see, eight millimeter head bolt going straight up from the bottom there, okay? So I'm gonna lay this right over here. We're gonna clean all these parts up here in a little bit before we go back together. Okay, now, looks like we have an exhaust manifold down here. It's gonna to have to be taken loose. So yeah, this is the exhaust valve right here. Let's see if these valves even move. That valve moves right there. This valve here does not move. So I was right. That is a stuck valve in the cylinder head. This one here actually does move though, which it kind of makes me wonder why that one push rod was bent. It might've been starting to seize a little bit. Okay. I've got to pull this header pipe loose here. I don't know if I want to leave that in place or actually pull this shielding off and actually move the exhaust out of the way a little bit more. I also have an intake here that I need to remove. I think I will probably, I don't know if I'll move, remove it completely or just leave it disconnected. I think for now I'm going to go ahead and pull these two 10 millimeter bolts out. Okay, I got one on each side for the intake here. And I've got two, looks like 12 millimeter maybe, headed bolts for the exhaust. I may try to leave the exhaust and the intake in place, I don't know. We're gonna keep playing around and I'll let you know what we end up doing. Okay guys, this intake bolt here actually was not a 10 millimeter, actually it's a 3 8 um, wrench actually fit that. And I'm gonna go and pull these intake bolts out here. I'm gonna keep these kind of organized too. I'm lay them right over here. For now, I'll keep them separate from the ones that went on the cover. Since they got them different heads on there. So anyway, I'm going back this other one out and we'll continue on. Okay guys, I am taking out the exhaust pipe or the header bolts here and they are held on by an Allen, okay? And the Allen size that I have here is quarter inch, okay? That's the tool I got. So that's what that looks like. You'll need some of them to pull these two bolts out. I'm gonna lay them right over here. I got the two intake bolts laying right over there. So let's see if we can get this little tool in here. That's what I'm worried about. So if I can get to this. From underneath here. Uh, yeah, I believe I did. Yep, I did. Okay. Let me back this on out, guys, and we'll go from there. Okay, guys, that pipe just dropped right down after we took them two bolts out, and I'm counting the head bolts there. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like we got five head bolts to hold this thing on. Let me figure out what size they are all the dirt and gunk. Well, that size is too big. That's a 14. It feels like they're a 13 oh, millimeter. Okay. okay, so we've got a 13 here. Might need a little bit of an extension. I don't know if this will work or not. And we're gonna go and back out these five um, head bolts. I can break them loose with this, and it looks like I can. They're not too awfully tight. Okay guys, let me back these out and we'll see if we can pull this head on off of here. 
Hey guys, I counted five head bolts there, but actually the one that I counted went right down in through here. There's not a bolt there. There's a place for a bolt, but there is not one there. So I'm assuming it doesn't really need it. Need it. John Deere didn't put it there on this particular model. So we're working on the second one right now. We got two more head bolts to go, and then we'll show you what it looks like. Hey guys, before I take these last two bolts out, I'm gonna break the spark plug loose. Just, yeah, there we go. I just wanted to break it loose. I'm not necessarily gonna take it out. Just wanted to, while it still was held in place there, I wanted to be able to uh, untighten it. Okay, let me continue taking these off. All right guys, that bolt's out. Last one right here, I'm gonna back them out. And see if we can wiggle this sucker off of here. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Feels like there's a dial pin or something holding it. Should release a suit. Let's look at our let me look at our other one right quick. Well, I got stuff all over my hands. Man, I'm dirty today. Damn, you ought to be doing this. Yeah, it looks like it sits on a dial pin right there. That's probably what we're hanging up on. So let's just keep wiggling it. So we're just wiggling up and down here. I think it's going to let go here in a minute. Yeah. Well, let's just keep on wiggling. Something's holding it here. Well, you know what? There's actually a plate down here. Hang on a minute. Cut the film just a minute. Let me investigate a little bit further. Okay, guys, there is another bolt here holding a shield over here on this side of the head. Can you see where I'm pointing at? Where I'm, I'm tapping the end of the wrench on the bolt here. I, I actually got it sitting on there now. So it backs out that way. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick one of these head bolts back in place and snug and just snug it down while I break that one loose, okay? And then we'll, we'll snug this back down. We'll break this loose, back that bolt out, and then we'll get back on and show you the removal of the head. Okay, so there's a little bolt, 3 8 headed bolt going in, holding that shield there. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna lay that little bolt right there so I don't mix it up with anything. And here we go once again. I'm gonna back this one back out. And this head should just pretty much fall off then. Well, this really ain't a bad job, guys. This is not a bad job at all. We hope to have this thing running today. Um, later on, I want to go get an oil, some motor oil and an oil filter for it, though. I'd like to do that before we crank it up and run it. All right, so cylinder head bolt out. Here's your four bolts right here, guys, and they are all look like they're the same length, so you don't have to worry about them being different lengths. So here we go. This head should come right off now. Well, I might have lied to you. Nope, no it didn't. Here we go. So there's our cylinder head, guys. What do you think about that, Nathaniel? Ew. <laughs> Looks ooey, don't it? So we got a um, gasket stuck to it here. We're gonna clean the surface of it all. We're gonna inspect this uh, piston a little bit. And we're gonna get all this cleaned up, guys. We'll show you what we do. We're gonna get some of this dirt off of here. We got a, we got new gaskets evidently for our intake. It looks like an O-ring. Uh, we got a regular gasket down here, new one for our exhaust. It should be in the kit. Yeah, there's your two dial pins that kind of dialed it in place. All right, we're gonna work on cleaning this stuff up, guys, and then we'll put it back together and see if she runs. Okay, guys. Hey, we've been gone about an hour and a half. Me and Nathaniel went to the store. We had to pick up some supplies. We got an oil filter and some motor oil. Got a new air filter. Uh, we got a new fuel filter. Uh, one like this here. We're going to go ahead and um, uh, just kind of tune this thing up a little bit. I was going to get some spark plugs for it, but they didn't have a listing for it. They said I had to bring them up there and match them up. So now we got to start cleaning up all this stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a couple little tricks I do that I have learned from the automotive industry. I'm going to shove a paper towel down inside this exhaust pipe a little ways. And I'll get a hold of it with a pair of needle nose here in a little bit. 
We're gonna block anything that goes down in that hole. Same thing with the intake right here. We're gonna fold over a paper towel here, shove it into the intake port the best that we can. We don't want nothing going down in there. We'll, we can grab a hold of it with a uh, paper towel. Show, another, show you another little thing I do here as well. And we'll shove one in this port here as well. Because when we do some cleaning, we don't want nothing going down in there. But just always remember to uh, pull all this stuff out when you're done. You don't want to leave it in there. It ain't going to run too good. All right, so there we go. Now we also have some shaving cream, all right? Shaving cream works good to fill that extra void yeah. if you want to. It yeah. keeps small dust and stuff from even getting in there at all okay yeah. you can't just go straight shaving cream without even doing what i did with the paper towels yeah, you can also use shaving cream it's by trimming, huh? shaving your beard off shaving your beard off that's right that's what it's for right <laughs> baby now right here where the cylinder wall is while i'm cleaning i don't want any dirt to get in between my piston and the cylinder wall so i definitely will smear some of this in here anyway especially in this crack here while we're doing all the cleaning. So there won't no grit get in between my piston and the cylinder wall. Okay, so we got everything kind of protected there a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead now and take a little scraper here. Um, what to do with it? It's just an old file here. I'm gonna dig off some of this uh, thick dirt, oily dirt Kind of get it scraped up out of the way and then we'll uh probably take my little nine degree die grinder and ziz wheel up the surface of this head or the block and um change out all the gaskets so stay tuned and i'll get to scraping here all right guys we're still just scraping up here knocking off some of the bulk and everything as you see it's kind of sticking to our shaving cream okay so that's a lot better than it actually falling into the um the bore there you know getting down in there where we can't get it out and uh so we're going to keep scraping knocking off some big stuff and then we got a lot of oily nastiness down in here so anyway we'll keep working at this guy so we got uh one of the things that we bought we bought three cans of brake cleaner and once we get some of this kind of out of our way we'll uh, use like the nine degree die grinder like i said and we'll also uh, finish it off with brake clean and get it nice and clean before we go back together. Okay, I've got <clears throat> most of this big stuff kind of scraped off of here, blown, blew it out with a little bit of compressed air at low pressure. I'm going to take the 90 degree die grinder here now. I'm going to go ahead and clean the surface of the block really good. And I'm going to clean all this old gasket off of this uh, exhaust pipe. And up here on this intake, it's made out of plastic. So don't, we don't want to be grinding with a roll lock on plastic. And actually all it was was this little rubber O-ring, okay? That's your intake gasket. So let's get going here. Now, if you don't have these type of tools, guys, you can just use a piece of emery cloth, sandpaper, or something uh, somewhat fine. And just do it by hand. That'll work just fine. But since we have these tools, we're gonna take advantage of them. And let me also remind you, even if you do have tools like this, be careful. You don't want to just grind part of your block away. You just want to just you just want to get any gasket off of here.
Okay guys, I got a can of brake clean here. I'm gonna go up here on this plastic intake and just kind of uh, scrub around with this toothbrush. This is actually Nathaniel's toothbrush. Went into to the house and got it. I figure he don't mind me using it for uh, Boy. cleaning this intake, huh? Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind that, do you? <laughs> nah, folks, this is an old toothbrush. We keep old toothbrushes. Uh, I got a place inside the house where I keep them at. And we use them for stuff like this, you know, cleaning when we're working on cars and stuff and cleaning throttle bodies and things like that. So repurpose our old toothbrushes, okay? So now that looks really good right there. All right, I'm not gonna spray everything off real yet, qu quite yet. The next step, I'm gonna go get the shop back. We're gonna suck all this stuff up and then we'll start cleaning it up. Okay, guys, we got the shop back here. I think I'm just going to flip it on here in just a second. We're going to suck out all these ports. Might even suck the uh, um, the uh, paper towel out with it. If it don't, we'll grab a little piece of needle nose, needle nose pliers and pull it out here in a minute. So let's get started. Go ahead and cut it on, Nathaniel. <laughs> Okay, folks, we got all that sucked out, got all our paper towels out. We're gonna use our brake, brake cleaner here, and uh, I'm gonna hold my hand over the exhaust pipe here, and we're just gonna clean this down really good with some brake clean, okay? And we'll be getting ready for, put this thing back together here real shortly. I'm gonna take this paper towel and just kinda wipe the top of this piston a little bit. I'm not worried about getting every bit of carbon off of the top of here. Not a big concern. All right, guys, this is looking pretty good. Anything around these little cracks here, we'll get this. Okay, down here on this surface. Go ahead and get it, get it out. Intake. I think we got it looking pretty good anyway. I'll hose off most of this stuff. This bracket here will be up against the head. We don't want dirt in between that and the head. Okay. Guys, this is looking pretty good. All right. I think that's good right there. Um, we're going to get a little bit of compressed air here, blow the rest of this off, and, and we're going to be pretty, pretty soon, we'll be ready to uh, go ahead and assemble this thing. Okay, we got this surface pretty clean. I'm just taking a clean paper towel with a little bit of brake cleaner on it. I'm going back over this surface really nicely. I want it squeaky clean, make sure there's no debris no oil or anything. I want my head gasket to seat really nicely. Same thing with my exhaust here. Let's just wipe it down right up here. We have an O-ring that goes in here, but we'll just kind of wipe it as well. So guys, we're ready to go ahead and put this head back on here. So stay tuned, we'll get her done. Okay guys, we're actually looking through our uh, gasket kit that come with this thing. We got two different uh, head gaskets uh, that come with this. Um, don't know why they would send one like this. It's, I mean, this, it looks like it's way huge, you know. And I'm thinking that this one here, I'm going to actually match it up to my old one if I still got it somewhere. I guess it's still stuck to my old cylinder head. Let me take a look at that right quick. Cause this actually looks like this is the one that we're going to need. And it's got some little instructions here letting you know that you may have um, a different intake gasket. Uh, use the one that comes with your engine. 
da, 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 and the cylinder head gasket as well. So let me double check this. We just want to make sure we're putting the right one on. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, I went ahead and decided we're going to use this head gasket right here. We're going to go ahead and stick it on the dowel rods right there. Okay. And right here is our intake gasket that we're going to use. We're going to go ahead and shove it in place as well. Looks like it fits perfectly. And our exhaust gasket, I believe is going to be this bad boy right here. It's gonna be our exhaust gasket, okay? So we're gonna just hang on for a second with that. These two look like they're too big. And one of them here, this is our valve cover gasket, okay? And we'll lay it aside. Uh, we'll be putting it on here shortly. I believe that would be the exhaust gasket that I want to use on this bad boy. I might actually glue that in place right quick. That might be the easiest thing to do. Let me get some weather strip adhesive, folks. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and glue this gasket in place to where I don't have to fool with it when I'm trying to hook the pipe up. So let me do that right quick. Okay. We've got our exhaust gasket glued in place. It's sit here for a few minutes. We've done that with 3M weather strip and adhesive. And uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and set our cylinder head in place here, okay? And see if we can get it to go on our little dial rods here. And there we go. Wow, that was super easy right there. And we've already cleaned up our head bolts here. And we're just gonna go ahead and snug all these up and we're gonna have to take a quick break and go inside and get on the internet. I wanna see if there's actually a, a specific cylinder head torque for these things. I'll let y'all know as soon as I find out. And also I wanna know what the valve lash uh, torque is because these rocker arms do have uh, an adjustment nut at the top. So leads me to believe we have to measure valve lash on this thing. And if we do, I will show you how to do that. So guys, stay tuned. I'm just gonna put these four bolts in and snug them down with the um, with my ratchet. And then we're gonna go inside and get them specs. So we'll be back here shortly. Okay, folks, hey, we've done a little research. We got the uh, specs that we needed. Cylinder head torque here is 220 inch pounds, which equals out to about 18 foot pounds. That's about what I figured judging by the diameter of the bolts because they look like eight millimeter bolts. And that's typically about the um, torque spec on a on that size bolt going into aluminum, okay? So uh, got a little inch pound torque wrench here. We're gonna do it in a couple steps here. I think I got it set like at 100 inch pounds right now. And what I'm gonna do is just, that's actually already there. I'm gonna do it like an X pattern and then we'll bump it on up. I might go ahead and just take it on up to 200 right now. And more importantly, <coughs> um, our valve lash specification is five thousandths of an inch on intake valve, 10 thousandths of an inch on um, exhaust valve, okay? And we'll show you how we adjust the lash. So we got a set of feeler gauges here. First one in there, that's your five thousandths right there. That's the one you're gonna use on intake. And the one that you're gonna use on uh, exhaust valve is that one right there, number 10 thousandths of an inch, point zero one zero, okay? And that's 10 thousandths and this is 5 thousandths. So I just wanna let you guys know that bit of information. So we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this wrench on up and we'll torque this on down. All right, guys, that's 220 inch pounds. We're just gonna run over top of all of them one more time. And we're good to go. Okay, guys, we're gonna go ahead and put these push rods and rocker arms in place. My head actually might get into place. I'm gonna be looking down in here in the flashlight, making sure I stick it into that push rod, into that uh, lifter down there, okay? And now I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these new rocker arms. And I'm gonna pour a little bit of motor oil, just a little dab down on here. So we just got a little bit of lubricant on there. I don't like to put anything together dry. 
I'm just gonna let that kind of get a little bit of lubricant on there as well. Down on that pivot point there, okay? Now, with that in place, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start tightening this up, okay? I'm gonna grab my ratchet, okay? If I can find it here, here it is. And my eight millimeter socket, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening this down. And when we get close, we'll place it, place the um, rocker up here, like so. Okay, guys, we're going in here. Actually, that new bolt has some Loctite on it, which is good. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, position this in here. Hang on, I think I went a little too far. I'm gonna go ahead and back this off. I wanna get my push rod in place. And we'll do our adjustment here in a little bit and I'll show you how we do that. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this on down like so. And see, it's, it is depressing the uh, bow right down, okay? So that's good. All right, so that valve is installed. And we'll probably just end up torquing those by hand. We're gonna loosen these nuts here in a little bit and actually do an adjustment here. Okay, where's our other push rod at? Right here, right, Nathaniel? Okay. Let me go ahead and look down in here. Make sure I get it in the right little bore. And it felt like it went right on in. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of hold it right there. And put this one in place as well. You can go ahead and put a little bit of motor roll on him too. All right, so there we go. Okie doke. Now, let's go ahead and start this one too. Okay, guys. Yeah, that new bolt has lock tight on. I can feel it going. That's good, good. So it won't um, end up. Oh, I'll make sure we're in there. And we are. Go ahead and push that up against there. There we are. So if we got a little play there. We're going to bump the engine around here a little bit and make sure we're on the heel of the cam lobe on each one. And then that's when we'll make our adjustments. So stay tuned for that here in a little bit. Guys, I'm going to just go ahead and put the little torque wrench on here at 120 inch pounds. Okay. That's probably about nine or 10 foot pounds. And uh, that's going to be all we're going to do with that right now. Guys, first thing, this 3 8 headed bolt that went in the side over here, uh, the bracket that held it to the head. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can install this one and it started right away. That's great, that's good. And then I'm gonna tighten that up and we're gonna keep on moving on and I'll tell you what we're doing as we're going back together with it. Okay, we got our intake bolts here, guys. Just wanna remind you what they look like. And we're gonna go ahead and start them right in here as well. Start them by hand and get that uh, shoulder there inside the intake. And we'll go ahead and get this one started good and then we'll put the lower one in and then we will tighten all these down. And once again, a 3 8 wrench fits these two bolts. 
Okay guys, we got the intake bolted down, snug down. And now we're down here with the exhaust. Remember our gasket, we glued it to the head so we wouldn't have to fool with it. Now my job is to hold this up here and get this started. Remember these bolts here were the six mil or quarter inch Allens. I'm feeling around where that should be. Okay, I think I got it started. Got one of them started anyway. All right, so let's move over to the back side and see if I can get this going. And then we'll use our Allen to tighten it up. Okay, we're gonna use our quarter inch um, Allen here in a socket form. We're gonna go ahead and tighten down the exhaust header. Okay. That was tight. We'll reach up here and tighten this and then we'll move on to the next thing. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and stick the uh, old spark plug back in here. Um, I took a picture of it. Next time I'm at the parts store, I'll match this plug over as a champion. They had no listing for it when we went today. So um, didn't know which plug to get, but we will next time when we go to the store. So we're gonna just snug this back down today and we will get another get a set of plugs for this thing here real soon. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these valves. Um, what I'm gonna do, I don't have a socket to fit this. I've taken all my big sockets to work, so I have a pair of channel lock pliers here that I'm gonna turn the engine around with. And what I'm gonna do is we'll just start with the uh, intake valve. We're gonna watch for it to open. Okay, it's opening. And she's starting to close. Let's let it close. Okay, she looks like she's closed now, okay? And she's too tight. And we're gonna turn it just a little extra something, something, okay? All right, she's closed. Actually, if you watch an intake valve open and close, typically both um, valves should be on their heel, and they are, because you can feel this one here is definitely on its heel as well. Let me grab a couple sockets. I'm gonna see what turns this inner one and what locks this, and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how we adjust both of these. Remember, this is the intake. It's gonna be 5 thousandths of an inch. Exhaust is gonna be 10 thousandths, so stay tuned. Guys, I'm gonna break these loose. Actually, that was already pretty loose right there. That's good. Now, these are just the locking nuts, okay? So, we're going to loosen them down, okay? Like I say, that intake there is a little little snug, all right? I should be able to just take this. Um, it's a T30, okay? I should be able to turn this by hand. Yeah, I should be able to. All right. So, we're going to take the 5 thousandths feeler gauge, okay? And we're gonna put it in between the rocker arm and the top of that valve, okay? And I'm gonna loosen this until I can get that in there. See how she's in there? She's in there. It's a little snug fit. Hang on, we'll loosen it up a little bit. We want just a little bit of drag, just like that right there, okay? That's actually perfect right there. That's five thousandths of an inch, okay? Okay, with that said right there, I'm gonna go and lock this down with our 13 millimeter. I'm gonna hold this with my hand, spin this nut down. I'm gonna put this on here. But I'm gonna make sure I don't turn my adjustment, okay? And what I wanna do is just snug down that nut right there okay and we don't go back double check it with our feeler uh oh i grabbed two feeler gauges that wouldn't be good mm. right there five thousand seven inch okay it's just a hair on the on the snug side but she will go in there okay that might be good for break-in purposes now on the exhaust valve we're looking at ten thousand seven inch okay so here's our 10 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge right here. 
You got the camera running, Nathaniel? Mm -hmm. Okay. And see, she goes in there easy, okay? So she's too loose. So let's go ahead and snug her down a little bit. And that right there is pretty good. I'm gonna back it up just a hair. So now on the exhaust valve, we got 10 thousandths of an inch. Okay guys, all I gotta do now is lock it down. And then we're ready to put the little valve cover back on and finish putting everything back together. Okay guys, we got the valve cover here cleaned up. Got the new gasket right there. We're gonna go ahead and cover this sucker up. And uh, it's just four bolts holding it on. So we're gonna go ahead and start those. And snug all those down and we will continue on. Okay guys, we're just putting finishing touches on the valve cover here. We're just kind of snugging it down to what feels good to us there. Don't go crazy with it. They're just little six millimeter bolts. So you don't want to end up breaking them off. Alrighty, so that feels good. Let's move on to putting this shield back on. Okay, hey, we're gonna put this shield here back on. Just wanna remind you that at the very bottom, we had a little eight millimeter headed bolt here that goes straight up, okay? So we'll have to feel our way around for that. And so let me just set this up here. I think all these other screws are already out and maybe held something else on like the top cover. So I'm gonna reach underneath here and see if I can get this started and hopefully get this started and get it, get it tightened up. Okay guys, we got that bolt in at the bottom. It was kind of tough to get that started, but we actually got it done. And all we've done now is just hook our coil wire, spark plug wire back up to our spark plug here. And I'm thinking now it's time to go ahead and put the uh, main cover back on. So let me go grab that and we'll stick that back in place. Okay guys. Um, I've actually hooked my fuel line back up here and I guess this little breather hose went on this um, a valve cover. Must use like crankcase pressure to actually operate this little little uh, auxiliary pump here. It must be how that works, vacuum or crankcase pressure or something. But these lines seem to be a little stuck. I might actually replace some of these. I know one time I did replace some i don't like the way that's pulling on that like that so that might be something we fix on a different day so anyway that's hooked up let me hook, finish uh hooking up the fuel line here put my clamp back in place and then we'll go ahead and put our lid back on okay folks we're just fitting this thing here back into place all the way around if we can So all these screws will go back in place where they're supposed to go. Okay. Hey, I think it fell in the place. It looks pretty good right there. Yep, I think we're good to go. So now remember we got them six screws, folks. They go all the way around here. They're all laying right here in the floor. Let's show the people what they look like, Nathaniel. We're gonna put all them right back on and then we'll and then we'll be done. You know what? I think we forgot a bracket. I see a bracket laying there that we forgot. We're gonna have to backtrack, guys. Hang on. Go ahead and click Okay. That now this makes more sense. So we got this little bracket here that the little pump actually mounts to, okay? That's where these other two screws go to that I took apart several months ago. So we got one that goes right up in here. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, guys, but it goes into the actually into the head. Let's so get it moved over where I can do this. Hey, well, let me take this hose back off. Pause it just a second. Okay. Later. Now with that out of the way, guys, you can see what I'm doing here, and I can actually do it a little bit easier, too. So this bracket here went back on here. And let me find the socket that I need. We got tools going everywhere now, don't we, Nathaniel? That's all right, though. We're wrapping this thing up. We're gonna hopefully be mowing some grass here in a little bit. I'm going to tighten this down right there. 
Tighten this out right here. And now, you can just keep the camera rolling. Hopefully we'll get this hooked up where they can see. I got these two extra bolts right here. Now I know what they're for. Okay, so let's go here. Let's hook our hose up here. This little vacuum pressure hose, crankcase pressure hose here. Evidently that's how this operates. And I'm gonna have to really tug on this. Yeah, we definitely need to get some more brake line, fuel line. This stuff evidently has shrunk a little bit, maybe over the years. We're gonna get us some more fuel line, run some on here. We're gonna put that on our list of to-dos, right, Nathaniel? Mm -hmm. We don't want no fuel leaks. We're gonna do that before we replace that filter. All right, so we're tightening this up. Okay, that looks good. That's hooked up right there correctly. Let's hook this hose up. And now I can go ahead and stick that cover back on that I just showed y'all. So I'm gonna slide it back on. I'm gonna go ahead and get it bolted down. And then we'll go from there. Okay guys, we got that cover on here. We're getting ready to stick this cover on. And I guess it might go a certain way where I can read the Briggs and Stratton maybe. Maybe it goes just like so. It makes sense anyway. I'll we'll start these eight millimeter headed screws by hand. And then I will tighten them up. The six bolts that hold this cover on, we've already snugged them down. They're already done, so we're gonna tighten these down and then we'll move on. All right, guys, hey, we're getting ready to install a brand new air filter here, okay? I believe this goes down just like so. I don't know which way this actually goes. Let's leave the other one go. Let me look at the other one right quick. Well, I guess we pulled it out before we knew. I don't guess it really matters. I'm gonna put the, I think that's the way it was, just like so. That side down. We're gonna put the filter in, brand new air filter that we picked up today. And then we're gonna put a cover on. What do we do with the cover? Right here behind me. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and pop that on there. And then, guys, we're getting closer and closer to time to give this sucker a try. friends and neighbors i am tickled to death this thing is working because it's been like several months since we had our lawnmower work it's last season i actually had to borrow my dad's mower a couple times to finish up last year and uh so it's good that we got it running i was a little worried that the gas in the mower would actually be bad by now but it actually runs so i'm gonna get out here do a little mowing today i got a little, few more hours left in the day and and then we'll get some fresh gas put in it. We'll get that oil changed done. We bought an oil and filter for it, but we're not even gonna do that today. We're just gonna get out here and mow a little grass. And uh, and, friend, and what is it, Nathaniel? How about you let me do it? Oh, you wanna do it. Nathaniel says he wants to mow. All right, we're gonna let him mow, okay. Guys, thank you for watching the video today on how to replace a cylinder head on a John Deere L120. Me and Nathaniel, thank you for stopping by, checking out our video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Say bye, Nathaniel. Bye-bye. Take care.